Increasingly, the country distrusts the so-called mainstream media, and with stories like this, it's not hard to see why. As protests break out across the country in defiance of unconstitutional guidelines and job-killing shutdowns, the Democrat Party and their media are doing their best to make the case for getting rid of your individual rights in place of big government control. This should be no big surprise to anybody. The mass media is filled with Marxists, socialists, and communists who would love nothing more than to use this outbreak to advance their wildest policy dreams. More like nightmares. We're currently seeing both media pundits and Democrat Party politicians express their desire to wipe out what we all know is normal and replace it with their vision. And their vision is decidedly tyrannical. In the age of social distancing, it was a shocking sight. Thousands of mourners in Brooklyn at a rabbi's funeral. You are putting my cops lives at risk and it's unacceptable. Okay, I'm getting real tired of these self-important wannabe tyrants using this excuse to trample on people's constitutional rights. For one, as far as I can tell, all those people seem to be wearing PPE. For another, cops risk their lives every single day in their job. It's literally in the job description. Every single person risks their lives and the lives of other people when they get up and go to work every day. Yet we don't stay locked away in bunkers because of that. Every flu season, we we risk tens of thousands of lives just by getting out of bed and leaving the house. When people say dishonest things like this to justify their anti-constitutional policies, it makes me think they're not trustworthy. To that point, the truth is this funeral was both approved and coordinated by the NYPD. So why is this NYPD commissioner making such hyperbolic, dishonest statements? If he was so worried about putting cops' lives at risk, why did the NYPD approve and coordinate it? And what about the Islamic services that are still going on in New York right now? I haven't heard de Blasio or anybody in the media express any outrage about that. More images are also surfacing of the homeless sleeping on New York's subway system. The governor is now asking the transit authority to disinfect every train every night. Wait. What? Disinfect every train every night. This is something that you all just now thought of? You're telling me that all of these trains have been left to fester with disease all of this time? Hey, I have another brain busting idea for you. How about doing something about the rats? Local governments are struggling to crack down on social distancing orders. New York State recently raised the maximum fine to $1,000. What authority do these cities have to really enforce social distancing? The most important authority that any community community has is moral authority. Translation, the governments have no authority. The Constitution is the law of the land and reigns supreme over any policy or guideline these people can concoct. These are the same so-called news networks that claim to be defenders of democracy, now making the case for arresting and fining citizens thousands of dollars for not obeying completely arbitrary guidelines. There's also the problem of these politicians ignoring the very guidelines they expect the plebs to follow under threat of force. For example, de Blasio was caught walking in Brooklyn Park and telling his critics to take a break. He walked 11 miles to another park when he could have walked in his own personal park Park that he lives in. Yeah, we get arrested while you get to go about your normal life. Another example is Barack Obama caught golfing on a course that had been shut down to everybody else. Not only did he go golfing, but he did it the day after his wife, Michelle Obama, put out a video telling everybody else to stay home. Hi, everybody. It's Michelle Obama. Our communities are among the hardest hit by the coronavirus, and we've got to do everything we can to keep each other safe. And that means staying home. Then you have Chris Cuomo, CNN clown and brother to the governor of New York, breaking his quarantine and then bullying senior citizens who took issue with it. And then you have Chicago's mayor going out to get a haircut, telling everybody that she's more important, which is why she gets to ignore the guidelines. Despite all of this, we're supposed to give up our individual freedoms and constitutional rights because these clowns made a guideline. This is apparently going to be the media narrative going forward because NBC was pushing the exact same message during their interview with liberal filmmaker Ken Burns. He's one of the left-wingers hoping to take advantage of this crisis to grow government and get rid of those pesky individual rights. Depression of the Civil War, of uh, obviously the Second World War, it was the kind of togetherness that was necessary to 
to to do that, the subsuming of what I want, individual freedom, to the larger what we need, the collective freedom that that uh, has always gotten us through tough times. We have an opportunity with this crisis to reset, to get away from the kind of knee-jerk divisions. And we're seeing people realizing the central role that government has always played in our life. It's the fact that we can shed the labels of red state or blue state, uh, you know, uh, Democrat, Republican, will be central to our solving the problem. It's really baffling to me how on one hand these people demonize Trump as an existential threat, then on the other hand promote a strong central government that places the collective good over individual rights. It's a contradiction that I can only explain by assuming they think they'll always be in control of that government. No doubt the second their opposition took control of those powers they would suddenly see the error of their ways. It's like the non-response to the accusations against Biden. They were fine with throwing out the presumption of innocence when it was a weapon against their political opposition but suddenly they're changing their tune when it comes back to bite them. Burns also hope that this outbreak would urge people to abandon their political divisions, which is really just how left-wingers always see capitulation to their ideology. What they really mean is that they want people to stop opposing their agenda. They'll be political as they want, they just want their opposition to stop being political. Yes, I'm generalizing, but this is definitely the case with people like Burns, who is fiercely partisan. Comparing Trump's election to the rise of the Nazis and describing his need to be in the quote, fetal position afterwards. With protests in Michigan ramping up as their governor assumes dictatorial powers, it's gonna be interesting watching the media literally become the enemy of the people. Encouraging arrest and downplaying individual rights. Someone at some time said something about this, but I'm sure it was just some old white guy anyway, so who cares, right? That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to let me know what you think about the changes in the comment section. If you'd like to support this channel, as always, you can do so on one of these platforms, and you can find all the links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.